Hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, I hope you're all safe and well wherever you are. Um, it's lovely for you um, to join us. It's lovely for us to be able to speak to you this evening. Uh, we've got lots of people um, signed up, which is fantastic for today. We've got um, around about 45 people um, who are signed up. So we're just waiting for um, a few more to come in. So we're going to start um, in the next minute or so. So um, please, um, you know, if you need to, to go and um, go get yourself a drink or anything like that, we're going to start in about one moment. And, um, and then myself and Miss Michelle and Miss Romante um, are going to take you through some of the ways in which the school are going to prepare um, children for the new academic year and also hopefully offer you some tips um, from home as well. So we're going to start in about, um, in about a moment. OK, it looks like we've had um, a late surge of um, entrance. So I think we're going to we'll make a start now. Um, so for, for people who have just joined us in the last few seconds, um, welcome again to everybody. Um, it's, it's great to be able to um, speak to you all, um, albeit virtually um, and, uh, and via webinar jam. But it's a, it's a really busy time of the year at the moment. Um, there are obviously lots of challenges going on outside of school, um, but it's a, it's a really important time of year. And so one of the things that we've been um, busy preparing um, as teachers and learning assistants and as a leadership team is just how we're going to make sure that we prepare students um, for, for the new academic year. And uh, that's something which we've been working on you know, uh, continuously throughout the year, but it, it really does come to, um, come to a head um, at this time of year. And so uh, we're going to go through today um, some things that school are going to be doing um, and have been doing, but also some of the things which you can do as a family um, and as parents to help your children um, transition back to school in, the, um, in September. Now, it's going to be um, it's a, perhaps an, an unusual type of transition as well, this time, because um, we very much hope that um, sep when September comes, it won't just be children who are transitioning back to school um, to do uh, to, for their new classes and their new year groups, uh, and for some children for um, for new class lists as well. So who they're going to be spending their time with in their classrooms. But we hope um, very much that it's going to be a time where we're going to re return to face to face school. So there are you know, there are many different types of transition, and um, and so I think it's really important that we do everything that we can. To support, um, to support families and students um, and also what we can do to support our staff as well to try and make sure that that transition happens in as smooth a way as possible. Um, and so I, I'm going to give you um, sort of a bit of a brief in introduction in terms of um, the transition process um, and, uh, and what we've got lined up in the coming days. Um, and then Miss Michelle and Miss Romanti are going to give you a, a few more specific um, bits of information and pieces of advice as well. Um, so in terms of um, transition, it's, uh, you know, it's well known, it's, it's a well researched topic um, that, uh, you know, every year children will, will transition between year groups and classes and teachers and key stages. Um, they're often transition between different schools, um, as our year sixes are doing um, at the end of this term as well. And it can be a time of real excitement and uh, an adventure and children will be inspired about what's to come. But it's also important to recognise that this time of year, it's, it's, um, it's sometimes a period where children feel nervous and it can be quite daunting. Um, they can feel apprehensive. Um, and so we want to make sure that we are um, helping students to adapt to those different settings that they're going to, um, they're going to encounter. Because you know, when they come back in September, there will be you know, slight differences in things like their academic structures and the expectations of students. Um, there'll be different changes in their social interactions, both with, that's with their teachers and their learning assistants, but also with peers and um, you know, as some parents will know, there are, um, your children will be, um, uh, there'll be a rebalancing of some of the classes. And so there'll be different social interactions, which they will need to get used to as well. Um, now, I think one of the things that we always try and do is um, any, any sort of um, initiatives or any, anything that we do, we do try and make sure it's sort of based in research. And there's you know, a, a growing body of um, research, um, you know, particularly in the UK, um, that talks around about making sure you get that transition right. And, you know, there's... There's always every year in any school, there's always a, a, a significant minority um, of people. So it's not it's not everybody, but there's always a, a, you know, a significant minority of people who who have a range of difficulties. And you know, that then um, can manifest itself through uh, lower grades or lower attainment, um, sometimes uh, poor attendance, um, as well as increased anxiety um, as well. And so. Um, what the what research suggests is that there are sort of two main areas. If you're going to make sure and help children to make a successful transition, 
um, that we need to make sure that schools um, are including um, students in sort of the academic um, and behavioural aspects of the school, as well as that maintaining that um, sense of belonging um, at, to the school as well. And so that's why we do place so much importance on it each year. And I think, like I said, with the pandemic and online learning and, and um, what we hope is going to be a transition back to face-to-face -face learning um, at the beginning of next term, you know, we want to make sure that we, we make that um, as, as exciting as possible and, and as less a daunting experience um, as possible. And I think, you know, going back to what I mentioned um, a moment ago about making sure that um, children are functioning in you know, the academic side of things, I think that's a real, um, it's really important to make sure that children are continuing to engage in their learning right to the end of term. That's one of the ways in which we can you know, really support that. It's, it's very easy at the end of a long year and the end of a long term um, to perhaps sometimes, uh, you know, students to take their, their, their foot off the gas, um, uh, for want of a better phrase. But it's really important that children you know, do their best and their utmost to, to keep going um, with that. And that's certainly what we'll be doing as a school and as a staff as well. Um, so I just want to um, give you a little bit of an, an update about um, Friday. So you know, we've done lots of things already as part of our transition process, um, you know, both internally um, and more explicit, explicitly with the children as well. But each year we have a transition day and the, um, the idea about the transition day is it's an opportunity for, for students to meet their new teachers, their new learning assistants. Uh, when we're in school, it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to, to be uh, immersed in their new environment, or so would that be a classroom? different key stage, um, the different things that are available to them. Now, um, like last year, we are going to have to do this um, on, uh, online again this year, but we've got um, what we feel is a, is a, you know, a comprehensive uh, transition day. So that's going to take place this Friday, um, and uh, there's going to be lots of information which have, um, would have already gone out to students, but um, teachers will be reminding them about this. So they won't actually see their current teacher on Friday. They will spend... Um, the day is learning with their new classmates and their new teachers and their learning assistants. And um, I put in my newsletter this um, sort of outline and schedule really about how that's what that's going to look like. So we're going to start the day as we normally would with a get and go session um, at eight o'clock. Uh, I'm going to um, share a, um, a sort of short transition um, assembly um, for all students to watch um, at the beginning of the day. And I would really strongly recommend trying to encourage your, your children to watch that because that was going to give them some important information um, and advice about how to approach the day. And then um, we're going to have um, our first of our Zoom sessions where the children are going to be able to meet the new teacher, um, their learning assistants, there'll be some getting to know you type activities and things like that. And, and I think that's a, you know, a really important sort of icebreaker moment for, for children. And you know, one of the things which you will hear more about today, it's, it's around sort of developing relationships um, with with people and you know, that really is an important um, beginning uh, for, for, for the new academic year. So um, that will be a really important session. So um, we want um, everybody to attend that, you know, attendance should be com compulsory here. And then in that session, um, teachers are gonna be um, identifying and um, explaining a two to three different transition activities, um, which they're gonna be able to take part in. And, and that will be used you know, not only for, uh, for children to familiarize themselves with you know, the types of work and the expectations around next year, but it's also a great opportunity for, for students to, you know, um, to sort of you know, show their new teacher you know, what they can do. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really nice opportunity. Children really enjoy sharing that. So please do, um, you know, whilst they, they might not be specifically um, related to a, you know, a maths lesson or a literacy lesson or an IPC lesson, for example, that, that information and that work which um, takes place on these transition days is then used to help inform teachers in their planning and in their, um, in, in their preparation uh, for when they have their class next year. And then what will happen at the end um, or in the afternoon is that we'll, all the children will get back together and there'll be another live, live Zoom session where, um, pair, uh, where students sorry, will be able to share what they've done that day. Um, and they'll enjoy a golden time type, type activity. And then we will continue to have our three o'clock club as well. So um, we've got lots to do um, uh, on Friday and that will be all sort of channeled through the normal Google Classroom and Seesaw. Um, it will be put on to, to children's current Google Classroom. So if they're in, even though they're going to be, um, they might be spending time with a year four teacher um, ahead of their time in year four next year, it will be all posted to the year three's Google Classroom. Um, and similarly for key stage one and early years, that will be posted to um, Seesaw as well. So we've got lots um, and lots to, um, to, to look forward to. 
Um, that's more of, a, I guess, a general overview of some of the things that are going on um, in the coming days and weeks. I'm going to pass over now to Miss Michelle, and she's going to give you um, some more practical ideas and tips um, around transitioning and, um, and explore some, some of the areas which I've already discussed a little bit further. So I'm going to pass over to Miss Michelle. Um, please, uh, we, we have had, um, when we were testing for this event, um, some slight technical issues. So if there are any problems with you um, sort of being able to hear any audio issues, then if you could please um, pop that in the chat box. And I should have mentioned actually at the beginning of this, if you do have any questions um, as we go along, please do just write them into the chat box. Um, anything to do with transition, you know, we want you to be able to um, use this opportunity to, to really um, ask, um, ask away. So please do use those chat options as well. So I'm going to pass over to Miss Michelle now, uh, and I will see you all very shortly. Great. Great. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. It is lovely to have you all here. So Mr. Chris has been talking about our transition day this Friday, but I did want to kind of stress the importance that transition isn't just one day. It really is a process that happens over time. And what we'd like to happen is that this Friday becomes kind of a springboard to continue some of the things that we're going to be talking about this evening and some of your own initiatives as well to kind of help ease any anxiety or worry that your children may be having uh, regarding transition. So one of the first and maybe the most powerful things that we can do is think about our discussions that we're having at home. So the power of our words is incredibly important and what we say and how we say it really does set the tone or the mood around this whole transition process. So, of course, this year, it's natural that we'll all have worries and concerns. We know that children have been out of school for a long time. We might be worried about their progress and if they're going to cope in the next year group. And those are all really valid feelings. But children hearing that again and again, things like, oh, how are you going to cope in year four? Or you're going to need to you know, work on that if you're going to make it in year five. Those things can really start to negatively affect children if that's something that's being repeated quite often. So what we really want is to set a tone around kind of opportunity and positivity and the excitement of coming back to school. So that's through the words that we use, but also, like I said, in the way that we are saying it. It's also really good, though, that we can kind of harness that nervous excitement that we all feel when we're stepping outside of our comfort zone and we're doing something that we don't ordinarily do like when we return from such a long period of online learning, there'll be lots of kind of nervous butterfly excitement around coming back to school, but also about moving up a year. But being kind of outside our comfort zone, that's a really great opportunity where we see a lot of growth. I think in education, we often talk about the zone of proximal development, and that's kind of that slight stretch just beyond our kind of comfort level where we see real growth and development happening. And something like transition is an excellent example or a real life example of where we can see that happening. So children are feeling uh, it's not their ordinary day to day things. This is something a little bit outside their comfort zone, but they'll go through the process. They'll be successful. They'll have a great time. And that's where we really do see their confidence build and all those other kind of soft skills that we talk about so much in school uh, really develop. So in your discussions at home, you might be uh, looking to echo some of the language that we use in school. And we always really stress the importance of our personal goals. So all the goals are obviously really important, but I've put kind of the big three that might come up a lot around transition up on this slide. So these are all hugely important when we're moving up into a new class or if we're moving on to secondary school. And these are, of course, those real life skills that I was just talking about that are so important for the future. And again, this is that real life example or that real case scenario where students get to practice this. Uh, last night, I was in a webinar for Women Ed in Malaysia and they were talking about um, job applications and what people look for in job applications. And while that might seem like a lifetime away for our primary students, they were talking about if you pick up a job application and you look through kind of the key skills or the main things that the employer is looking for, it's repeated words that we keep seeing. It's things like being able to think creatively or think critically, being able to be adaptable, being able to be a strong communicator. And something like transition is a really explicit scenario where children are really going to be 
able to develop those things and able to really practice those in real life. So it is really an opportunity for us to see a lot of these things happening. Of course, these discussions are a two-way process, as we know. So being able to make sure we're listening and we're available to our children, that might be hearing things about what they're looking forward to and really trying to grasp on and run with that, but it will also be able to listening to what their concerns may be. Okay, And they will have some valid concerns, especially after such a long time online. This is quite an unusual transition uh, compared to other years, perhaps. But again, we can always hopefully try and lean that towards those opportunities for really um, that positive perspective and thinking about how we can take that nervous excitement and move forward with it because all the children will be feeling the same way. And you know what? There's probably teachers that are feeling the same way too after such a long time of working from home. Uh, I've also put down here about communication between our home and school. So we are definitely here to help. We always talk about, you know, having an open door or an open ear. We're ready to listen. And we really don't want that to be something that's kind of an empty promise. We do want to make sure that parents are able to come to us and talk to us if they have any concerns or email us while we're online. And we'll be able to take action about what you're saying. So in these first couple of days, as we do come back to school in September, uh, I'm sure you'll be passed on with your new teacher's uh, communication details, or your learning assistant. And it's really important that if you do have something you're worried about or you'd like to let the teacher know, uh, that you do bring that to their attention. Please don't wait until that first parent-teacher meeting that happens a few weeks into term. If there's something that you really want to say, make sure we get that open communication flowing because that really is the best way that we can all work together to help our students. Okay. And I've got a few more things I wanted to mention here before Ms. Ramente uh, goes into even more specifics with you. So routines, the power of routines, I have never seen uh, become so evident as I have during our online learning process. I've really seen a shift in some students who uh, perhaps during the first lockdown didn't have such a good schedule or didn't have such a good routine and how much improvement they've made by shifting to a more kind of concrete schedule where they are getting up at the same time every day, they're having a good breakfast, they're doing some exercise, they're ready to start their learning on time as a school day. So it's really, I know you read so much re research about routines, but seeing it like this in real life with so many different case studies in front of me, it's really kind of been a powerful message for me. So obviously over the summer, it, we want children to have fun. We want children to relax. It's potentially going to be a very long summer if we're all locked indoors, but we really want to encourage that kind of step back from the screen. But we want to also focus on thinking about those routines that we're going to need coming back in September. So that is going to be things like bedtimes, that is going to be things like getting up in the morning. Uh, I know for myself, when you set that alarm for that first day back after the holidays, it's always a bit of a struggle. So kind of building up to that in some way that's going to work for you and your family. Uh, that's thinking about reading, which I will always bang on the drum for, but making sure that you've got lots of opportunities for reading over the summer holiday and, and getting away from that screen after having so much screen time during the term. Other things like working on building independence for coming back to school, uh, even things that might not seem like a big deal, but if it's children being able to, you know, open their own food packages or they know uh, exactly what they're going to have, uh, how they're going to be able to feed themselves at lunchtime, those small things like that can make a huge difference as they're trying to build up that independence for when they are back in the classroom. I've also put down here about uniform. So this can be a real source of anxiety for children. They, you know what kids are like, they're always worried if they don't have the right gear, if they're going to look different or stand out, they don't have their PE kit that they're meant to have. Um, you know, if their swimming kit is a bit tight, a bit uncomfortable, it's been a while since they've had it on. So making sure these things are, you know, that they fit, that they're ready, uh, can really help ease children's anxiety in those days leading up to school. Now, again, we've been online for a very long time. Uh, so we completely understand that there will be people that don't have those things and uh, are not able to have those ready. Hopefully, depending on SOPs and other guidelines that we're given, there'll be an opportunity to come into school in those days leading up to school reopening uh, for people to make purchasing appointments and things like that. But of course, there'll be uh, no repercussions or penalties or anything like that if anyone doesn't have the right uniform. But it will be about talking about that with your child and explaining that you know, there'll be lots of people that don't have the right shoes on day one, and that's okay if we haven't been able to get out and buy them. 
uh, but reassuring them with those notions. And the same really does go for equipment. So making sure they know where their school bag is. They've dug it out from the bottom of the wardrobe. Uh, they've packed it with all their stationery and everything that going, they're going to need. And like I said, getting back into those routines. And if that's looking at the timetable and packing the school bag the night before so that they've got everything, that's building that independence and that's really uh, getting them on track for getting back to school. So hopefully that gives you a few small practical things. I'm going to now pass over to Ms. Ramante, who is going to dig a little deeper on some of these ideas. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Michelle. And um, I will pretty much echo a lot of what Ms. Michelle has um, mentioned already in this webinar. But um, we will be also providing you with um, more uh, practical resources. So, for example, what you can see on the screen right now are snippets of some of the worksheets that will be available for you guys to access after the webinar. Now, so just to echo what Ms. Michelle said, really validate your child's feelings. It's been a very long time we've spent online. We're going to have a really long summer and everybody is going to find it really challenging and difficult to come back to school. Somebody might be worried or anxious or nervous. And please make sure that you do reassure your child that having those feelings is absolutely um it's okay. It's normal. It is what we're all going to be experiencing because we've been online for such a long time. Now, we want all the children to come back and feel comfortable coming back and feel comfortable changing um, classes, classrooms, meeting new people. So um, to validate their feelings, it might be difficult to, have to initiate that conversation and start having and asking the right questions. So um, the worksheets that you can see examples of, they're all based on the questions you should be asking and the discussions you should be having with your child. For some of our younger learners, like early years or Key Stage 1 students, we have some coloring sheets. They're called school, school readiness coloring sheets. And now um, they have ready-made statements about the school, which you can use as discussion points with your child. Additionally, and if you don't have printing facilities or that's something that's not available for you, use any coloring, drawing activities about the return to school. Ask your child to get a piece of paper and either write the feelings or draw how do they feel about coming back to school. Then be available for your child and, now, and talk to them about the picture, about the things they might have mentioned and drawn. For um, older students, very, very similar um, activities are provided, um, mainly talking and discuss, like sharing their feelings. But make sure that you do encourage your child to think about positive um, feelings as well, and positive thoughts about um, everything exciting that there will be once they return to school, because that will help them feel a little less overwhelmed and anxious. Now, if your child doesn't want to share the feelings or thoughts that they're having about return to school with you specifically that day, please don't pressure them and give them that space because that's only going to make them more anxious. Um, have them, uh, let them have their safe space um, to write down the feelings and emotions they might be having and then make sure that you tell them that you're ready for them to listen whenever they are ready to talk about it. Now, also, they might want to talk to somebody else, to another trusted adult, an older sibling, for example, who has already been through a lot more uh, transitions at school, or they might want to share it with the class teacher. If you are want, uh, worried uh, about a few maybe worries or anxieties your child has identified on the sheet, um, and if you would like to share that with the new class teacher, that's absolutely fine. Please do so. Like Miss Michelle mentioned, the communication between the home and school. Um, however, do get your child's permission because um, that will make them feel a little bit uncomfortable if you have shared something that they weren't willing to share yet. Okay. Now, to help further with that, it is difficult to ask questions that we might not know where to start. Books and read aloud stories about school and tradition can be a great tool to address this. There is a wide selection of read aloud stories available out there to help you talk with your child about the transition and returning to school. Um, ideally, you would choose the story together with your child and you can choose, obviously, um, a different one every week uh, before return to school or several, um, a few nights a week. Uh, choose it together. Listen to it. 
and discuss, discuss the story. What happened? Uh, what thoughts and feelings the characters had? How is this similar or different to their own thoughts and feelings? How did the character solve the problem or cope with the situation? What can be learned from that story? What from that story can be linked to real life, to the emotions they're having and feeling? Okay, Children love listening to stories and being read to. So this is one of the best ways to support your child with feelings and emotions. And another top tip, it does not have to be a story about school or transition in general or specifically. Any book will help you facilitate the talk about feelings and emotions with your child. And that makes it easier to make connections and open up because it doesn't feel like you're talking about them. Sometimes children can feel a little bit pressured, like, oh, why are you picking out on me? Um, talking about a book, they start relating, mm, maybe I feel like that. So using books is a great um, example to like how to bring up that conversation that sometimes might be a little unnerving for our little ones. Now, again, these um, the I have some examples of the books and all the links will be shared with you after the webinar. Now, finally, I would advise you all to prepare in advance. We have been online for a really long time and it's been a strange year for everyone and uh, um, return to school will be challenging. And you want to prepare your child and yourself to return to school in advance. Life at home can be a polar opposite from the routines at school. And that is something that everyone finds challenging, and adults including. So I would suggest at least a couple of weeks before school return, practicing some school-related routines. Miss Michelle mentioned this as well about bedtimes and waking up. So two weeks before school, start um, asking your child and have a discussion why you're asking them to do so. Start asking them to go to bed a little bit earlier so that they can wake up a little bit earlier like they would be um, getting up for school. This way, they will be a lot less tired in the mornings and will be more focused and ready to learn from the very beginning of the school year. Um, similar thing would go to meal times and snacks. Now, I know they will be used to a lot of regular snacking and um, um, having meals at home. I think we're all in a very similar situation. So a few weeks before, try to like match the snack and lunchtime to the school timetable. So this would look like having a morning snack around 10.30 a.m. in the morning, afternoon snack after 2.30, 3.30, 4 o'clock, depending if your child's doing ECAs, and lunchtime for the little ones around quarter past 12 and our older students at half past 12. Now, I will again echo Ms. Michelle, routines are crucial in supporting your child's development. And the sooner they get settled back into school routines, the easier it will be for them to learn and develop further. So that is something I would advise a lot to get ready for school in advance. Now, another practical suggestion we have here for you is a two-week countdown to school calendar. It is an editable version where you, which you can fill up with activities you love doing as a family. And it also prepares your child for the return of school. You can fill up the calendar with absolutely any, any activities you decide to do as a school and possibly um, what is allowed at that particular time. But um, just some examples. Um, you could schedule, schedule in some baking or cooking activities with your child. That encourages uh, children to practice their numeracy skills right before coming back to school, especially timings and measurements, as well as reading the recipe and many other essential life skills. Um, read aloud with your child. Okay, so the stories we're sharing with you or any other, encourage your child to read throughout the summer, especially right before the beginning, uh, the end of the holiday, beginning of school. Read aloud with your child, read it together. Um, reading um, together with your child increases their attention spans and also aids language development. It supports lifetime interest in reading, and that is something that we really want to instill in all of our children. Maybe choose a Friday or Saturday afternoon or evening where you get a delivery pizza and play charades or Pictionary as a family. Like these games or any other board or card games support the development of language and vocabulary, visualization, memory skills, creative thinking, communication, confidence. And I could go on and on and on. So um, use that family uh, sorry, use that calendar as a family, as a group together so that everybody has their input 
and stick to those activities. Make sure everybody's committing to it and take this exercise seriously. Like try not to miss the activities that your child was really looking forward to doing. Okay, but enjoy your family time, enjoy your summer, and then a couple of weeks before start thinking about coming back to school because that will really help your child. And enjoy it. I hope that these resources will be useful for you. And now I am back with um, Mr. Chris and Ms. Michelle. But thank you, uh, Romante and uh, Michelle there. There's some really, really top tips um, and uh, we've, got, we've had some questions that have come through in the chat box already. Um, if you have, do have any further questions, then please do um, add them into the sidebar now. Um, and before I sort of go on to the q and I just want to sort of pick up um, some of them. Michelle and um, Romante, they both spoke about you know, the importance of um, validating feelings, um, you know, recognising that children are going to be nervous and worried. Um, but, you know, it's also important for us to recognise that you, know, you as parents are likely to be having, you know, those, um, those feelings uh, yourself and um, and it's okay for you to have those feelings you know um, as well about returning to school um, when we do do that face to face but also you know um, all parents are going to be you know worried and, and apprehensive about how their children are going to be getting on um, in, in in their new classes and their new year groups etc so just to reiterate you know if you as parents need support, if there's anything that you feel that we can do, then please do continue to communicate with us at home. It's not just about how we can support your ch your children, but it's also how we can support you um, as well. Um, but, but one thing I would say with that, you know, I think it's it's important that you know children feed very much off their off their teachers, off their parents, and so you know it's really important for us as teachers, you know, um, throughout this process, which we which we um, you know, recognise that there'll be some challenges, but we approach it with a real positive mindset and. You know, we would we would ask that, you know, as, as parents, and I'm sure you probably all do this, but it's important to re remember, even though you might be feeling you know, that anxious, that um, uh, you know, that anxiety, perhaps for some of your children, is that you do you continue to reinforce and, and model those that positive mindset. Um, because, you know, the, our children, you know, we know that they're like sponges. We know that they take on um, and they will feed off what we um, off, off what we present, project, project, um, sorry, ourselves. So I think that's a, a really, really um, important thing just to know that. You know, whether you're whether you're a parent of a child who's just joined the school or you're a, um, a parent of a child who's been at school for a long time, all parents are going to have those um, those feelings. So um, I think it's just important to recognise um, those for yourselves. Um, I'm just going to go back through now um, to the beginning of the chat. We've had some um, some questions which um, which we're going to just take now. So um, there's a couple of questions I think which are just want some clarification on um, transition day and when it takes place. So. Yeah, so we, we have our transition day this Friday. So we have one day um, where the children will set, uh, spend time with their new teacher. Um, and so that is this Friday. So it won't be the following Friday as well. Um, so I think that's why it's, it's so important that um, we do get people who are going to attend, um, attend that um, and really sort of take part to the best of their ability. Uh, of course, you know, we will be continuing different transition activities um, throughout um, and in children's normal classes. Uh, and we will be busy internally preparing you know, discussions between teachers um, and new members of staff who are coming in. Um, but it's 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 this Friday, which is our transition um, day. Um, we've got a question here around: um, Is it possible to for a parent to request the same teacher for next term since online class um, has been for a while? And it's, it seems as though it's only been a, a short period where they've had um, face to face learning with teacher. Um, I, I can I can certainly uh, recognise that it's been a really difficult year. I, you know, I think it's great that you know even that time, um, you know, our, our teachers are making such a positive impact on students and on parents. Um, but of course, you know, uh, you know, we, we must continue, and you know, there's a good chance that you know we may well be back online and face to face for you know on and off now for for at least another twelve months until the, the vaccination. Um, um, rollout continues and so um you know whilst we would love to be able to to you know really match that up um we're really confident with the the teachers that we've got um, put in place um there was a specific request um or, or mention really um for nursery going into reception um and um i wrote to uh, reception parents today and i'll um, mention it in my newsletter on friday but we're delighted to um to announce and appointed that um, we've appointed our new reception teacher who is uh, Miss Lucretia, and um, Miss Lucretia will be joining our reception unit um, in September. Uh, Miss Lucretia, um, or Lucretia, as many of you will know her, um, as a, is a current parent of the school. Um, she's also a, 
um, a valuable member of our PTC, and um, she's a, an experienced teacher. She's taught for over 10 years in her native New Zealand. Um, she's got great experience working with children from across different year groups. She's worked um, across, um, she's worked abroad as well um, in Africa um, for a short time. And so we, I, I, I've got the utmost confidence that, uh, you know, whilst it will be uh, a shame to leave um, you know, all the all the current teachers behind. I think it's uh, it's a really important part of that process, actually, in, in terms of moving uh, moving forward into a new class um, and, and a new teacher for next year. Um, we had another uh, question here. I'd like to check the transition on this. Is this Friday for the existing students moving forward to the new year group? How about for new entry, early years reception um, children? Need, uh, do I need to get to the, the Zoom on Friday as well? So um, so the Zoom sessions uh, will take place for, for all of our reception students all the way up to um, our, um, our current year fives, but um, um, incoming year sixes, I guess. Um, our year six students will um, have their transition with secondary school um, on Friday as well. So that will be slightly different, but they'll be have lessons with their secondary school teachers. Um, and whilst predominantly, yes, the, the Zooms are for the students, we recognize that for, for our youngest students, you know, accessibility is is a really important thing, and so you know I would encourage you, you know, particularly for for our reception students. Um, I think it'd be a nice opportunity when you're when you're sitting alongside your child. Um, you know, of course, you know we want our children to be the ones engaging with with teachers and learning assistants. But I'm sure um, there will be an opportunity at some point to just um, to, to say hello. Um, but we but we do want to make sure that those um, those um, Zoom sessions are are directed for the children, um, and you know that's what the the main priority for them um, will be. But uh, yes, uh, reception students are, are, are very welcome uh, and, and we would expect them to join um, the Zoom sessions as well. Um, let me see. Uh, we've got a question here around um, uh, an academic calendar. So I think, uh, Mr. Mante, um, can you just give, perhaps just give us an outline of the resources which we'll be able to send out in the next day or two um, that you talked about here? Um, yes, so uh, we have uh, everything as PDF documents and the countdown uh, to school calendar is a PDF as well as a Word document. And we will aim to send this out probably later by tomorrow to all the attendees of the webinar. However, if you know that somebody else would want to, um, um, uh, if you've shared with somebody and they have, if they've missed out a webinar, uh, please um, tell them to get in touch with myself, Mr. Chris or um, Miss um, Michelle, and then we will share the resources with you. At the same time, I think if you uh, like wanting to know more about the dates and things, um, the calendar is always available on our KTJ school website. Thank you, um, Romante. Uh, we've got um, another question um, here just around assessments um, for, um, for students at the end of this year. Um, so, of course, you know, whilst we're online, um, you know, teachers are still continuing to to assess um, students. Um, for those, um, for parents, may well be aware that they've been taking place um, over the uh, over the last week or so, and will continue to do so um, for the remaining of this week and maybe even um, next week. So, um, our teacher assessments um, are, are really important um, as teachers prepare to pass information to the new teacher. Uh, and they will be through a combination of you know, looking at the, the children's work throughout the year and their contributions online. Um, but for, for some year groups, that may involve some summative assessments as well, um, where children will, will um, take some assessments. Um, it's really important that if they're going to be doing those online, that they are done, um, they're done in, in a meaningful way. And so you know, what we want to make sure is that you know, teachers have got a really accurate um, picture of what students can do at the moment. So there may well be some assessments which... Um, students do online and and if that is um, going to be taking place if you just make sure you know, to the best of their ability they're doing that um, you know with integrity and making sure that they are um, uh, sort of completing to them to, to give a, a really true reflection because uh, you know there, there will be you know some students who have found this more difficult than others um, but you know I, I know that by the time they come back um, and as they arrive back in school face to face um, it'll be it'll be so much more um, beneficial for the children if the if the new teacher's got an accurate idea of um, of where they are, so they'd be able to to help um, you know uh, firm up some of those misconceptions or those um, those areas where they need to continue to develop. Um, uh, we've got a um, a question about um, uh, where can we get the information on for year six. So I, I assume that's current year six students. Um, who are moving to secondary school. So Miss Michelle has been um, has been um, working and leading that um, transition. So Miss Michelle, do you want to just give a, a little bit of an outline on 
um, transition for our year six students? Sure, yes. So year six have a slightly longer uh, transition process because we recognise this is a big step moving over to the secondary school. Uh, and that, in fact, started today. They had their first live Zoom lessons with some secondary teachers for English or what we call literacy in the primary school. And I actually had some lovely feedback from the two secondary staff today that got in touch to say how polite and well-mannered our primary students were. And I don't know if they were just scared and nervous or if they were hopefully coming through with some lovely manners. So that was really nice to hear. But I can also see the follow-on part to this question uh, asking about information also on assessment. So yes, the year sixes are undergoing some assessments this week uh, and all of those links have been shared with the students and I would probably recommend getting in touch with that class teacher uh, to get more clarification on anything you need for that because it will look slightly different uh, for each class. But in terms of transition, uh, that will be ongoing. They have another specialist lesson with a secondary teacher tomorrow and then on Friday uh, they have an information meeting with a panel of secondary staff similar to the parent meeting uh, earlier this week. Uh, and a few more lessons as well. So they're getting involved with science and history and English and maths, uh, lots of different secondary subjects. And then throughout the next few weeks, uh, Mr. Neil and Miss Vanessa will be running some other transition activities to help uh, familiarise themselves with the campus. Even though they're online, they're going to be doing a few different uh, online activities that will help them finding classrooms and recognising different staff, which will be really fun and engaging as well. Thank you, Michelle. And um, and yeah, and thank you, Michelle, for, for leading that. Um, so, well, it's been a really good um, transition process between primary and secondary. And um, and I'm sure that that's going to stand our children in good stead as they um, as they approach the secondary school next year. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's another question just around assessment as well. And just to, so just to reiterate what Miss Michelle said there, really, if you uh, if you're wondering specifically about which year groups, uh, my uh, my um, bit of advice there would be to contact um, the child, your child's class teacher. Um, and they will be able to give you an overview of any um, summative assessments that they might be doing, as well as any of the formative assessments. Um, and remember, at the end of this term, there will be a full written report as well, which um, will give you an overview of um, you know, where your child at is, is at, sorry, um, in relation to year group expectations, um, as well as an overview of, um, of their um, uh, the year that they've had in terms of their, you know, their, their attitude to learning, their efforts, um, you know, some of those other skills which um, which they developed in ECAs and, and, and other subjects as well. So um, do look out for that. They, that will be coming out in the um, in the final week of term. And um, any assessments that do take place, whether they be summative or that ongoing formative assessment that we do, and um, that should be all reflected within those reports there. So I hope that um, answers that question. OK, I think that's um, come to the end of our questions. So um, it's been fantastic um, to be able to speak to you. I wish that we could do it um, face to face. Um, it would be also very nice to be able to sort of see and have um, that two way interaction. But it's been great. So I've sort of kept a, an eye on the, the numbers and um, you know, we've maintained, um, you know, I think, all of, virtually all of the um, people who've been here. So I hope it's been useful for you. That, you, know, you may well come away from this um, session still with some additional questions. Um, so please do get in touch with either uh, myself or Miss Michelle. Um, and we'll be very happy to, to follow that up with you. Um, in the meantime, uh, we very much hope that you, you stay safe, um, you look after each other, um, you know, both as within your families, but you know, as, as um, I've spoken with, with many parents um, this year, is that it's, you know, it's difficult to support each other um, as, as friends as well. You know, we know that we've got very um, strong friendship bonds between, um, you know, between our parents at the school. It's a real strength of our, of our community. So hopefully you are still finding ways to support each other in that way as well. Um, we will continue, you know, we've got still a very busy um, term. We've got lots to do and after our transition day. Our staff and our teachers and learning assistants are working super hard. We've got things like our online sports day, which is gonna come up, um, come, come up next Thursday. And we'll send more information out about that. And, um, and then we're going to have a really um, strong end to the term. And, uh, and we want to make sure that we give um, the children the best possible chance uh, moving forward ahead to next year. OK, so uh, thank you again. Stay safe and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Bye bye, everybody.